We are live here at the Glass Academy for the gathering point. It is time to blow up some wood. Whoa. That's right, blowing glass against the wood because this is going to be the coolest piece ever. We're going to do our terrarium in it. Oh, You're what? Gonna come to the Glass Academy and see the finished product. It's flip-flop weather back here at the Glass Academy. That's a sizzler. And Chris will probably tighten up the neck a little bit, but what he's doing is burning the wood and getting that design 100% in the glass. There's the corner. Oh, it's pretty cool. You can see the wood pattern. And what you don't know is that it smells absolutely fantastic in here now. It's good wood. Yeah, we should have... Uh, good wood. It's real good wood. We might have to start the show more often like that. Good smells, not I like burning it. sugar. So we're going to be putting this into the annealing oven, and I'm going to be diamond sawing it after the fact, guys. After you see it on the annealer reveal, then you're going to see it go through its own little transformation, which is going to be real nice. We will share pictures on our Facebook page. You're going to... Meanwhile, Jake is over I'm here knock it off right on your the paddles, and then I'll open the door for you. Just to be clear, the Beautiful. beginning piece is always a fun piece, not necessarily. There you sometimes go. Sometimes it's practical. This one will be. This is going to be a beauty, and it's going to be the first, actually the second one of the Slippery year. Bugger. As but long as I can get some air in it of this really particular nice. piece that's about to be made. Oh, I'm talking about my piece that was just made. Ah. I'm going to put the plants in it. We can look, see, here's the high-tech drawing. These are air plants that will go in it. We are on show 262. You are live here at the Gathering Point. We are a small glass blowing studio in Dearborn, Michigan. Coming to you live every Tuesday here on Facebook and YouTube. You're gathering over that, Jake? I'm gathering right over it. Beautiful. YouTube. So we got a nice layer. This was a... This is going to be a mix of a couple incredible things. First of all, one of the most popular and top-selling products of last year, this particular product and color pattern. And if you guys look at what Chris is doing down here, you may realize what the situation is going to be. I got it. They might know. Best better monitor those chats. Oh yeah, I think we someone got might okay, have so it on Chris there. is is in the cane doing the pickup. Would you open and we close the door Oliver for me and shield me a little there. bit? I'm not sure who has the mic. I got a mic. You do? Is it on you? I sure do. And I'm actually preheating this cane. The jig's gonna be going into the mold and he's gonna be picking it up and you can't pick up cane, which is a beautiful decorate decorated, pre-twisted and pulled glass rods that are going to be stuck on the outside edge of this beautiful piece. Check this out, guys. He's going to shape it up and make sure it's the right circumference to go into the mold. Oliver, you may want to move that box over there for him. It's going to be a tight squeeze, and you never want to have too little glass going into a situation like this. Nope. Because you won't have the right amount of heat to blow this out into the shape you want and turn it into a pumpkin. But if I've got too much glass going into the mold, then it's like what happens when you try and... It's pretty much like too much ginger in your <laughs> carrot juice. He just stopped. Thank I you. Put <laughs> I knew that's what I was thinking. If you put too much ginger in your carrot yeah. juice, it's going to be too hot. It'll it get you. delicious. And if you put too much molten glass into the mold, it's not going to work out right. So Jake's getting ready. He's shaping it up. I got these canes pretty darn hot. This is a pretty classy pumpkin, folks. We had a video last year that got a million views i'm sorry how many views it didn't have like 10, 10 million it was i thought it was even more than that but it could have been that that uh that live video from ann arbor it was 10 million yeah best did this amazing video like but we didn't billion. know 
it can only last 30 days. We didn't know we had that setting All right, on. I'm going in. That's how you learn. Learning experience. What was it again? 15 million? It was somewhere between 10 and 15, yeah. Yeah, right before we it got deleted, we all panicked and said, what happened to that video? So we're still here. A viral video was had, and now we're moving on. This is the color pattern from that video. However, we're amplifying it 50% by adding our 2023 signature cane color. But watch it when it comes out, guys. So that real, was the Red Wings month. It's real important hurt. now, once he heats it up in the, the glory hole here, guys, is to come out on the Marver and make sure that all those pieces are attached correctly by marvering it on the steel plate and making sure they're pressed down evenly. Real quick. It really Thanks, gives Albert. it a beautiful <laughs> geometric uniform pattern, having those canes stood up in the 12-point optical mold. Dad, will you catch this chunk that's about to come off? Sure. Blow. That's a fun sound of the jacks on all the cane. That's good. Yeah, amazing. That is a nice looking little Italian styled button nose. Well, beautiful. Those are always some nice looking little nugs that you have and little treasures that you could put inside the annealing oven and get out. You'll see it during the annealer reveal. Gotta stop saying that. It looks like a pin cushion. <clears throat> like Blow it light. looks so soft. Oh, it also looks like a sea Beautiful. urchin. Those purple sea urchins. It is pretty soft. We're gonna have to figure this out here. Mega torch for the end. You want to torch it, Jake? Nah. No, you're gonna get it. All right. I'm gonna give it a little bit of gravity. That's I know with that a guy. T, not a D. Gravity. Yeah. He lives here. See him around every now and then. Good guy. So we're gonna chop the end off of this, and if you've seen us made make a pumpkin before, which is what we're making here. We need a cleaver, like a meat cleaver when you say we're gonna chop this end off. That'd be the funniest. We like, could skit. come in with the cleaver here in a second <laughs> for sure. That's a really nice look of deep violet. I almost think I see some red in it. All right, how about a little bit of air? Good. Mm -hmm. Get it, Jay, get it. <laughs> I want the meat cleaver. Yeah, we need a meat cleaver right now. There we go, Working guys. With a I got jar that little butter. tasty treat right there, the jewel. If I remember, wasn't there a good movie like The Jewel of the Nile? Wasn't that like uh, Harrison Ford's movie? Sounds like a good time. Sounds pretty nice. All right, Oliver's assisting us in the shop tonight. At some point, I'll give him my mic. So you'll hear Oliver. He was just whispering something to me that was super important. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You I'll guys might not here. ever hear super top class information. It had to do with the color of the stem. That thumbs up had to do with the timing of the stem. And Bess, what do you think about the stem? I think it's gonna be a stem. Sweet, how about <laughs> that, folks? Did you say that you thought the stem might be red and white? <laughs> Everything I see tonight seems like it's gonna be red and white, you guys. I don't know, I'm really liking orange and black. <gasps> orange and black. That I just hear know. some crazy Who's noise. Who's orange and black team? That's a, uh, this is oh, I can't even say it. their name. Orange but and black. You do know that Go the Red, Red Wings, Wings are playing tonight, guys, and it's probably the most important game of the season. They're playing the Washington Capitals, <laughs> and we need to win this game. It's huge. Uh, to be in the playoffs, and 
Hopefully all you folks out there are going to keep us notified on the chat with what the score is, who got what penalty, who got no, who no, no, skated no. just right. Which no, mall are you going for? What we for? really want to know is what, say where are you left watching or right. from? Is this the first time you've seen the gathering Probably point? right. Have you Considering joined us before? Considering the size of that, yep. Or is this the first time you've seen the show? We make different products every week in glass because we can. This and piece is going to be for sale for the Loyalty League members. All right, so let's talk Loyalty League. We have a membership here at the Glass Academy. We have done 262 of these shows, and our members were asking for special perks and privileges. So we came up with a membership program. If you are in the Loyalty League, you're going to be able to purchase this. You'll get an email with a link as soon as it is done and completed, and we decide on the price. You drop it on that and one or one more Marver? If you're a star supporter, there are many perks you get as well. You are dropping on this one? Okay. Star supporters get there you go, the Anila reveal. They get discount coupons. And soon we're going to get a member survey. All right. Oliver's going in the mold to get it the sure ribs I get the for torch the handle. Here, the big fluffer torch for Jake Reddy. I'm going to knock this pumpkin right off of the pipe and then... As Michelle was showing you there, Oliver's prepping up the most prettiest of stems he ever has done. And you brought. notice how he's straight from the furnace. Ooh. There's not five steps away. It's two steps away. It's beautiful, Oliver. Ooh. So that they can it's get hard to teach stem these on. stems. It's really about understanding the glass and the way it moves. And Oliver brought a really nice one there, folks. If we didn't already tell you the color, which we didn't, this stem is going to be number one 2024 color here at the studio. The cranberry. Cranberry. Look at the twist. Look at the motion. The mojo. I love that cranberry. That's gorgeous with the perps. Yeah. That's love a great it. Great call, Oliver. So then so the Jake's final step. Putting yep. the final touches on here, making sure the stems actually connected very well and not too fragile. It's the worst when you put a pumpkin stem on and it's not fused correctly to the top of the pumpkin and it's very fragile. We want our pumpkins to last the test of time. Yep, that's beautiful. That is a beautiful pumpkin. Let me get the dough for you. I like when the annealer's on this side of the shop. Much nicer. So that is white core, transparent purple on top, and the purple and white candy canes with the cranberry stem. That's got all the bells and whistles. We're gonna do whole runs. You, if you're new to the show, wait till you see our pumpkin season. That was a beautiful piece. It's gonna be available to the Loyalty League members. And we're gonna get into a pretty serious show here, folks. Welcome. Why they're getting set up for the next piece. Bess, could you tell us who we've got watching today, where they're coming from? I sure can. Um, I do have an update on the Jewel of the Nile. It was not Harrison Ford. It is Michael Douglas. I had about 10 people uh, update me to tell you that. It's a Jewel of the Nile, mm -hmm. but uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, the Jewel of the Nile, was a movie. So everybody, update your knowledge <laughs> indicators. <laughs> because that's cool. Michael Douglas is sweet. I like him too. We've got Scott from Arizona watching. We've got Robin from Dearborn watching. Jackie from the UK. Woo! Amy from New Mexico. Yeah. Mary Lou from Pennsylvania. Patty from Commerce Township. Carol from Sarnia. Over, oh, we just got Cindy from Kansas in the chat. Over on the YouTube side, we've got Mary from Hudsonville. Diane from Florida. Icarus from University of Michigan, Flint, as always. What up, Icarus? Vanessa from Connecticut. I'm seeing a couple newer names, which is really exciting. Hey, I wonder, Great Vanessa from Connecticut, is it because we were just in Connecticut? 
Vanessa. I do not know. It's a question. Vanessa like Vanessa. All right, they're getting set up for the second piece here, but they're all walking in <laughs> different directions, so I have no idea what the second piece is. I was just keeping busy. I'm just meandering around in a circle, so don't put the camera on me. Okay, <laughs> how about if you hold up this item for me, and then you can talk about your wheel. Oh, boy. So, number one, we got a gift in the mail, and we love that. Maybe less stuff over here. There Probably we go. going to be, we're doing... Wendy, Look you're a champion. Cool. An OG member of ours, glass connoisseur and collector. She blinged out our heart. She sent me a picture of the first one, and then I was like, geez, that's sweet. It's so cool. And she's adding her own twist onto it. I mean, we love making these hearts. They're such a blast this past Valentine's season doing these. We feature them on the show like three or four times almost, it felt like. But uh, Wendy put her own spin on this and sent our own product back to us to represent in the gallery, wherever we want to represent it. And Wendy, uh, we appreciate you for that. Yeah, Super we'll hang cool. it somewhere. We'll hang it somewhere lovely. Wendy's an OG, folks, and uh, she's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful person. We appreciate you. And now I've got the camera best, so watch out. All right, got a couple more names to shout out. We've got Anna from Sweden says hello. Ooh baby. Sharon from Livonia, Joyce from Allen Park, Dave from Wisconsin, my mom in Williamsville, Lori from Ohio, Susan from Michigan. So welcome everybody. I know everybody's still kind of jumping on for the night. Yeah, welcome. How many other international viewers might we have here tonight? Let us know in the chat. Vanessa says, I'm Lucy's friend's mom. Oh, that. Thanks, Vanessa. Well, I gathered up some gold crystal I got. What did you say? I said, <laughs> I gathered up some crystal. This is the core gather of this piece. I'm actually making like a, a summer iced tea slash lemonade slash margarita pitcher. Uh, it's about that time of year. I mean, we just got back from visiting Lucy in New York, and the first two days, three days of the trip, we got like two inches of snow and it was freezing cold and then spring sprung right when we were there big springer. yep we had a big springer action and we got back and it was 75 in the car on the way back and it was too hot for me already yeah it's like 75 it's too hot guys especially in the hot shop but the reason that i coated it with a white core is i wanted to have a little bit of an opalescent white uh, untransparent look to it before I coat it again with clear crystal and then I'm going to add that beautiful uh, cranberry onto the outside. Dan is watching from Melbourne. I know you said international viewers so I'm going to throw those out there when I see those pop up. Sorry, Bass. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> You're good. You were asking about international viewers. I was going to say Dan from Melbourne just popped up in the chat. Melbourne? Isn't that like 10 miles away from us? Might be a Look different Melbourne. <laughs> All right. Got a nice encased large gather of crystal here over the white. And now I'm going for that cranberry. One of the main things that we tell people when they take a class is you can't touch the glass too hard with the tools and what I saw there on the way Chris walked this over was that you guys could see there was more glass on the pipe and you could see that it was glowing and there was some serious action there but you couldn't really see it moving around it wasn't flopping around like a super hot molten piece of honey might be flopping around but that's because Chris has been blowing glass for 35 years and he turns the pipe so smoothly as he's walking and talking, working with gravity, that it just looked like one solid blob. But that glass coming right out of the furnace was completely molten. We always compare it to honey on a drumstick and that's pretty much what it was like there. And now like he's got some color on there. Like a turkey drumstick? Kind of like a turkey drumstick. Nice. Yeah. That's what you use when you're going for a dip of honey. <laughs> All right. Oh, man. Makes me think back to that split pea soup Uncle Dennis just made. Oh, I'm supposed to have some of that somewhere. Yours is in the freezer. Nice. But look at the way he's shaping it. That doesn't look molten, does it? I mean, he's just pushing it into place, but he's doing it so 
effort smoothly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bless you. He's making a lemonade iced tea margarita summertime pitcher, I believe. Sharon says, would that be considered a tender touch? I would consider that a tender touch. Yeah, that's about right, Sharon. All right, so I'm getting this puppy hot. I'm going into a, a different optical mold that's going to allow me. Jake, when I go in... I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna come out, heat it up and go back in. Would you stand on that? Or Oliver maybe. And Jake, you can get the I'm side here. view. What do you want? Stand on the bottom of that mold when I after I come back again so I can do the twist. Oh, I know what you're talking about. So look at that, he's blowing into it, but you gotta watch the overblow because this is an angled open mold. And if up near the top, near the pipe, it blows out too much and you're not controlled with the depth of the pipe in the mold, then you're bumming. You're bumming. You try and get a neckline in it. You try and finish it up, and it's too thin and no good. All right, Jake, you ready? Yes, I'm ready. We call this the leg hair remover. I don't actually know if we've ever done this technique. Listen to that. It's a great noise. Bess is like, I love that noise. You ever seen that tech before, Oliver? I think I may have seen it once, but it's been a long time. It's not something we pull out often. That's a really cool way that Chris just used the optic mold to grab the end of it without creating the ball like I did on the pumpkin before this and being able to get a beautiful twist in those straight ribs onto the piece. That was a pretty, pretty tasty tech, as they say. So, Jake, maybe you can inform me on something here yes i do it that way i've seen chris twist things up just on the marver itself is there a benefit between one or the other you can get more a lot gripping tighter. ability a lot tighter going in the mold like that yeah. yeah okay the other thing which chris doesn't know but i mean this is chris's first time blowing glass since we just did our deep hot shop clean this past Hello? wednesday uh the whole hot shop team here we removed all the equipment we did make two or three vip member loyalty league member videos that are going to be going out to our Good. subscribing members about that process but we removed Hello. all the equipment from the studio and cleaned it top to bottom and so the marvers are Good. actually freshly ground and super sticky so there is Hello. a chance even that chris could have potentially got the same amount of twist good as in the mold on those fresh marvers maybe i could have we don't know but we do know the mold works great i did notice the marvers being super clean and i love that yeah I mean, it's they just amazing good. for sure i commend the whole hot shop team because everybody does such a great job keeping our shop clean it's really 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 a, a, a nice thing gotta keep it clean yep. it's the just, only way to work just like you gotta have it hot yeah gotta have it hot gotta keep it gotta keep it clean jody says was dearborn in the path of totality for the eclipse i'm so excited that we were i watched it with most of my family in western prince edward island we were in the path of almost totality jody i believe our statistic was 99.4 percent or something along it. those lines um so almost but not quite um, it was super cool to go outside though. The birds were kind of acting weird when I went outside and it got really cold and dark and my solar lights all turned on in the middle of the day. Which that was cool. cool. Okay. That's yeah. what I pointed out at my place all too. Right, Oliver. Punty? Yeah, what I'm was your percent of foot. coverage? A foot. You guys put it in the chat. We can do a I know some people had like 39% over in foot. like Clear. uh I don't know, Georgia or something. It on, it but like around here, we, we have 98%. The, what I read was 99.4, but I think we got a little okay. less than that. Yeah. 99.4% is pretty good. We do have some amazing staff around here. In fact, there she is. <laughs> Amy, what was your percent? 100? Was that in Ohio or Michigan? Webba Canita, Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> Armstrong Airspace Museum. That's cool. 
It's a huge, serious event. It's so cool that we got to live through that, and a lot of people did travel many miles. Luckily, we're nearby. But uh, Amy did go out of her way to go see that in totality, which is pretty Do you know tight. what was the uh, most searched thing on Google right after that? Why my eyes hurt. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why do my eyes hurt? Yeah. Because people were staring directly at the sun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's our two show tables? Let's, uh, well, let's just take a look and just refresh where we're at in this process because right now Chris has got this really incredible shape that could go in many different directions. Uh, we know this is going to be a pitcher. If I had to guess without having heard what was going to happen, are you about to put some sort of uh, lemonade, watery foot on the bottom? Oh. So Oliver is going to be dropping uh, probably one of the bigger feet that he's dropped before. And when you drop a foot, it doesn't fall off your body. <laughs> no, it comes from him working it like a champion. Now, see if you notice a difference in the way Oliver works this material on the way over compared to the gather Chris had. Oliver's got a really beautiful. Oh, look at this. Turn slow, baby. That's looking good. Nice slow. When you drop it, right we hand as high as you can. We do have a technical question above, drop whenever it right you're ready up. for one. Nice. Let's go, Oliver. That's the way you drop a foot. That's what oh. I'm talking about. I got the paddle. You worry about the punny. Okay. Thank you. What were you saying, Bess? I'm sorry. I, no, you're good. I said we have a technical question whenever you're ready for one. Give us one sec. You're good. That just went on really nice. Well done. He dropped a little sphere. And Chris is getting it lined up here. This is the Venetian style. We're gonna push against okay. each other's tools here. See the way that's flaring off of the jacks? It's also really nice when I can see how tall I can get this flame, if I can see it to actually lick his finger. Oh yeah. Well, I didn't want to mess up oh, the foot. that's nice. That's a beautiful foot. And the technical question is. Yeah, so our technical question actually comes from Wendy. She said, how do Wendy. you clean the pipes to get all of the glass off? Do you have to heat them and grind them? How do you clean the glass and, and heat places? That's just a super good question and perfect timing for the type of pipe that we have in the box over here that we used on the pumpkin. And I think once we get this flipped around and Chris goes to take that little bit of a longer reheat to build up the heat back in the top of the pitcher, I'll go over there and show you guys. But if you're new to the show and you haven't seen glass blowing before, this is about the halfway point of the piece and one of the most important parts of the piece that's going to dictate the rest of its creation. He was just blowing on the foot, solidifying it in place, and he's going to be breaking this piece off of the pipe in his hand, and Oliver used in a way that I don't think many glass shops do. He used the leftover glass that would have become waste glass to make and shape up a beautiful punty that's going to be what's holding this glass on the end of the solid rod Oliver's bringing over. You can start to see that cranberry pink coming out of the body of the glass a little bit. Nice. This is the shape of that lampshade. Give me a little touch. I was check. thinking it was lampshade like too. Right? So that'd be pretty cool. Functional piece, not a base. Right. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So look at the way they line it up. Chris is opting to use just a little bit of cold metal right on that connection. And he's gonna put one drop of water to start the micro fractures. Push. We Is that the cranberry? Break. That's the cranberry. I love that color. So good. Got it. Thank you. So that just went very smoothly. And now this is the opportunity. You take a look at what Oliver's got there. Which that's still, I mean, that's probably... Five million degrees. About five million degrees. Yeah, give or take. No, that's about uh, probably 1,200, which is where the glass solid. Mom, you want to check this out to answer Wendy's technical question? Take a uh, look in Oliver, here. Would you, uh, clean those this pipe I'm wiggling off right of me really now. Quickly. Shears, yes. Is the original yeah, piece Jake of the show. The See that recycled really glass and the way it's and slippery. So you're probably yeah. going to have to maybe it's grab blue. a whole new pair. It's recycled yeah. blue. That glass Handle all on these fell guys off super the pipe. Hot. Am I talking over you guys? Or are we? Okay. So that's a clean pipe. Now this is a different pipe. 
This is not a stainless steel pipe, and this was from the pumpkin. Look at that beautiful purple starting to show, the white undertone. This stuff's all popping off. But when you get a piece like this, this is a really sticky pipe. All I would do is take the torch, blast that, and it would pop off. Reheating the glass, it would crack itself and shuck itself clean off the pipe. Okay, we're gonna need to chill this punty, so I'll come over to the pipe cooler. So that's a really good question, Wendy, and that uh, depends on the material, depends on what you're making, and that really comes into play. That really comes into play when you're doing production glass blowing, and if we only have four pipes of a certain style and we're making a larger scale piece, we need to find a way to clean those pipes quick enough that we can get them ready and get them preheated for the next piece. And that becomes part of the efficiency in the, uh, the repetition of the product. All right, so we're getting ready now to do the picture trim. To get the opening on this, the shape of a pitcher, you've got to do a real crazy trim. And uh, that's what's happening right now. I got it opened up just a little bit. I'm going to go in and dig in on one side and then come back around on the other side to create a, almost a spout. If it's okay to interrupt for one moment, I just want to mention that the table is now live. Oh boy. Hope everybody knows what the table is. The table is the featured product table of each show. This is show number 262 that we've done now here now, and every piece we make is for sale on the show, depending on the circumstances and who it may be available to. Look at the move you just did. Wow. The off-center trim to open up the pouring ability of the pitcher. That was incredible. I'm gonna think about how to paddle this. Yeah, you're gonna have to really torque your wrist or something. Just the rapid. <laughs> yeah. Got nope. another question for you. Yep. Um, Wendy says, uh, with the recycled glass, do all of the colors you use melt down to the blue color or do you have to watch what colors you throw in there? That's exactly what happens. They all melt down to blue and we can show you this blue right here. You've seen many different blues. These are so recycled blue, beautiful champagne flute set with Michigan. Um, Michigan bubble blown as well but these products and uh, oh, those blues all range between the different blues they're all the colors of the rainbow and that's one of the most beautiful things about the glass that we use the metals and minerals all melt down to make the rainbow and then blue that's our recycled blue glass but what you're seeing there is the product table folks and like I was saying that's a uh, table full of glass that we feature on the show and I believe Amy put together this uh, table to be a little bit of a discounted bonus package. They're curated together with likewise or like-minded. Like starter set and gift set. Yeah, starter set, gift set. Wow. It's pretty tight. So like we gotta get one of these for the shop, right? I think so, yeah. So we can just get a big old uh, pitcher of icy lemonade situation. Yeah. All right, so Oliver, we're going for a, a clear crystal handle on this, like size of a mug. Okay, size of a mug. Maybe just a little bit bigger than a size of a mug. A little large, a little bit in charge. This is gonna be another example you guys saw. It was either last show or two shows ago. Us giving Oliver some criticism, not some criticism, but some guidance upon making his first few handles, which if by first few we mean like under a hundred handles in his life. Um, and he's doing a really great job. This is kind of a little bit of a step up from last week or two weeks ago where it's a pitcher size handle. For a mug? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it's looking perfect, Oliver. It does look great. So I gotta make sure that I'm keeping this thing hot while Oliver's shaping it up and sculpting this handle. Right behind you, Oliver. You, you, you got air in there? Nice. Just marv it into a cylinder. Looks great, Oliver. Let it swing it out a little more. 
Beautiful. Marble one more time. You can tell we're pushing Albert to the limits because he gets Great quiet. He's focusing. Looking good? Yeah. Okay, go for it. All right, so now this hollow handle is going to go on. And Oliver, it's really important for me to make sure I get it on dead straight. But Oliver is going to be getting it buck wild right now, nice and hot. We Just got our handle tool sure out already, right? That's looking you get good. It buck wild. Okay, whenever yep. you're ready, I'm ready. Not too crazy now. Just one. one. One thing I noticed right off the bat in the way Chris stuck that on there is I was thinking he was going to go much lower on the pitcher, but he was very wise in thinking about the way a pitcher works, the leverage you need to pour that liquid, and he put it up top, overhanging over the lip there, um, the way it should be. This piece is going to be for sale here tonight, folks. We're going to get it up on the website. We'll let you know when it's available. The uh, pumpkin, I believe, is up for Loyalty League members, and we had one more piece, or this is the second piece right after that. All right. Going to need a GA stamp, Oliver. It's not over till it's over, folks. We've lost a lot of pieces, and I'm not trying to jinx it, but that's the trick with glass blowing: is that you need to be focused till the very final moments. And the longer you work on a piece, the cooler the temperature gets, and you lose that core that core heat and glass is not only fragile on the physical level it's fragile on a molecular level molecules something about cules yeah look at the way that uh, pink doubled up in thickness of color of density of color on those ribs as it's twisted it's a really beautiful look Oliver's here thinking ahead. He's like, if I'm not necessarily working on something, I know I got to open the door for him, and I might as well close the door because the longer that door is open, the less heat you're going to have. And we want a really intentional, focused heat where you want the heat. What's our uh, idea on putting this guy away? I'm thinking uh, you could get underneath it like that, right out of midair with the uh, green grabbers. I think they'll go around it. Let's get a little sizer upper, maybe. Yep. And then flip it on your way over. Yeah, and or I can knock it off right with him oh, so you yeah. don't have to flip it. Yep. You know, so if I get, I'm going to flash one more time, but I'm going to give it to you like that. And you're going to go underneath that, and I'll just tink, and then I'll torch it from underneath. That's a beautiful piece. I'll get one good flash on it, I'll show it to the camera, and then we're going to get it in there. Oh, yeah. We do have a gift card okay. giveaway. We do that once a month. I think I remember Sharon being right. the winner of that one last week. Look at that. Kind of want to make a twist cup to go with it. Right. A set of four would be beautiful. Incredible. Yep, squeeze it. Come on, baby. Wow, one tap schmack comes in with the hot torch and you don't want to take too long on this process just getting that melted in so you don't cut your pinky finger Oliver's gonna take it behind our glass blowers fence thank you Chris yep oh yeah let's go that's beautiful that, thanks that's a sweetie i didn't that's want to talk beauty. too much during the creation of that piece because i was just like let's get it done here no no <laughs> eye contact no words let's keep our head down and focus that, that was, was a beauty, a beauty. You guys it was a gorgeous that's piece awesome. i love it and i do think that a matching set the reason i made that core white is that it's nice plus there's not a full transparency with a piece like that with lemonade or margarita or iced tea you don't need to see the color of it it's not a wine decanter it's a summer drink if it's sweating on the outside because you got a bunch of ice in there it's going to be really luscious and beautiful looking that's a tasty piece hope somebody gets it it's a nice one so i know we've got a nice plan Ooh. for the show but i do want to first off suggest this right here 
This is the giveaway question, folks. This is how you get a chance to win the piece that we're going to be finishing off the show with tonight. And that is the question. Handmade household. What would you like to see made out of glass Thank that you. would be handmade and would be in your household? We're going to make a piece at the end of the show, and we will give it away. And, Mom, could I hand you the camera? Because I got a suggestion for the guys as they talk about. They're kind of recapping what went down. I'm talking. My suggestion is that even though, and you can let me how you feel about this, Mom. Let me know how you feel about this. Since we do have a good plan for the show, I'm just going to keep talking until they eventually turn this way. Um, I'd like to make a twist cup for that set. Is what I'd like to do. What are you doing? Make a twist cup for that set. Nice. And that can be a part of, we can put it up as, I don't know if we want to put it up as an option of the decanter and four twist cups and see which one goes first. Or I say make one twist cup and we sell it as a set of four matching summer cups to go with the picture. And I know, I know somebody's going to love that thing. So I'll make one twist cup because I've been showing, Oliver and I went over twist cups the other day. Matt's mm -hmm. been making twist cups. We got our recycle tank back up. This is going to be the style of glass that's uh, used in the Michigan room here in the bar we're putting into the studio. And it's a super technical technique, but we've got the cranberry out. It's going to match it perfectly. It'll be transparent. I won't put white underneath it. And I think they'll match as a beautiful, beautiful set. And then while I'm doing that, it gives you time to plan out that uh, piece you were queuing up. That's the maximum amount. I know that's about maybe 10% over the maximum amount that's going to fit in this mold. So what do do? How do you fix that? I'm going to have to blow the bubble through the bottom, tuck some up onto the moil, and then only have the bubble in the perfect shape and only as big as I need it. If it's overexpanded and thin, then it's going to fold and flop and not fit in there. So this is called stuff in the mold, not stuff in the muffin. Or the turkey. I was going to say, it looked about as creamy. <laughs> what were you saying? <laughs> that molten glass looked about as creamy as that last goal that Dylan Larkin put in. Oh, yeah. It was just back, forth, back, forth, and then it was just like, bloop. Thank you very much. Mush, straight to the corner, and everyone was just screaming, he put the butter on it. This is nice. <laughs> All over the biscuit. They're going to do it tonight, folks. That's all I know. And we're going so you're into going the You're going transparent mold. with this puppy. Yes. I like it. So same style optical mold that I went into, guys, as with the picture for the cup. Except the cups now are going to have a 12-point mold where the picture had a 20-point mold. Which is kind of nice if you think about maybe the picture birthing four beautiful little cups. Aww. Sibling tumblers. And here he goes, twisting them up just with the force of the jacks. That's real nice. And one of the things about doing twist cups is it's really hard not to over twist them. And Jake always loves it when I seed plant like that. <laughs> but this is a great technique very sporty you guys uh it's definitely twist cups making twist tumblers is a technical uh achievement that most glass blowers strive to do and look at this Blow. He's twisting it up gorgeous keep it coming blow harder did he do twist cups on blown away 
Oh. Good? Well, I don't know anything about that. Well, I don't have a mic, so But uh, you'll see just about any glass blower out there who, glass blowing, if you're a musician, twist cups are kind of like the Suzuki method of playing music. How many of you guys utilize the Suzuki method? Put it in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not talking the Suzuki dirt bike method. We're talking the <laughs> musical method. Maybe, the, maybe just for not saying it's me, probably for someone watching right now, what is the Suzuki method? Because I definitely know chat. what it is. Well, it's far, it's far <laughs> away from taking a 50cc Suzuki motorcycle and, and doing blast. a tabletop up off the top of a jump. This is a method that is a practicing method of your rudiments when you're a musician. Like the Suzuki paddle method. Are you utilizing the Suzuki paddle method right now? That's right. Beautiful. Ooh. It's just what we needed. <laughs> nice and tight. Yes. Yeah, three people needed to do that technique because we were trying to explain the Suzuki method at the same time. Oh, okay. It was because we were trapped. Oliver capped the end of the pipe and Jacob kept the sides perfectly straight and I took the paddle and squashed, keeping the same amount of air compressed in the interior of that tumbler so we would get a really sharp edge on the bottom of the tumbler. That just shows off real tight skill and technique. The compressor. This is something we do as well too. Watch Oliver come in with a little just, bit. Let's do a punny. Oh, we got just it so tasty and tight punty. down here. Nice. Yeah, it's just, just. I mean, everything about this came out perfect. So we don't need any extra like. By doing that twist and having the tool on there, there was an extra little mass of thickness on the very bottom. So it almost acted like its own self-fulfilling. Uh, Maurice thick spot <laughs> on so the bubble. Self-fulfilling Maurice thick spot. My brain seems a little mushy tonight. <laughs> I don't know why it is, but... Is it because yeah. you went under the needle today? What's Jake? the needle? <laughs> is that uh, like a bee? That's a, that's a swarm of bees in the studio. <laughs> I think, you I had think some my brain is mush. Done today, didn't you? Oh, that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah, that could have been it. His fit brain is a little foggy, folks. I don't know what's going on. Thank you. Maybe it is the heat. It's getting a little warm yeah. right now. How much volume do you have in that hair? What's your number? Oh, it's a seven and a half. Seven and a half. And mine's more like a four or a five. Like, he definitely is, you know, fluffier, so. <laughs> There's a little frizzy today. <laughs> is my hair touching the mic all over the place? No, we were saying we don't know how you have your hair down. Oh, um, it's because it was a wash day today. Uh -huh. So I had to let it dry. And then I committed. And now I'm here. Well, I've, got so, a, I've got a hairband if you need one. Let me know. It's got to be steamy up around those parts. <laughs> it is. <laughs> that gave me just enough time to heat this glass. That up. is Thanks, good. Oliver. <laughs> Let's do the Suzuki paddle method right yeah, now. Yeah, in a second. <laughs> it's funny. My two favorite uh, things on the table, I didn't say them out loud, but those are the first two things that are gone now. The mm. Suzuki products? Maybe. Which product? Uh, it was number three, the two green slugs, and then number ten, it was the uh, wine stopper with the matching glasses. Oh, yeah. So, pulled those down. Those were my two favorites. I do like the idea of the wine glasses matching the stopper. I mean, that I think it's cool. You know, but has anyone ever tried to just put a nonchalant wine stopper on a bottle of champagne? It could get troublesome. It could explode and launch. That's what I'm talking about. A nice, straight-sided, beautiful, technical tumbler. I'd say that's for the lemonade right there. It will be stampeth. Stamp coming. Incoming. 
So when we put this up on the website, we're talking about three more, a matching set, handmade, as close as I could possibly get them. Jake, that how, exact size. how matching is matching? Let the people know. If we're talking in terms of volume, pretty matching. Pretty matching? Which brings me to my next point, which is we were talking with uh, a couple students this weekend, Oliver and I were, and I don't, actually this was when I was on my own, Oliver, so I don't even know if you know about this. Maybe we've already talked about you it. You weren't but there. Someone had a really great idea, and I think it was just a kid talking about the Merck water out the back there, and we've definitely made our Merck scale out of these nasty block buckets with all their slime in it and whatnot. I was thinking it'd be a really cool signature drink for the bar one day, maybe if it was Halloween or something, to make a big trough full of drinks and have like a fake block bucket and Little. just be like, get your Merck water, you know, or whatever it is. And we could actually carve a wooden block that's exclusively for pouring the drink. Yes. I mean, we could even make little tiny, like, uh, Epicurean bottles that have a little permanently sealed in oh my God. four ounces of real Merc water. Collectible Merc water yeah. from your trip Merc to the GA? Merc water kind of sounds like it would be... Yeah. I can already see, like, on the bar menu, Merc water below that ingredients you don't want to know yeah. <laughs> all the good stuff <laughs> don't ask thanks oliver sorry well jeez i didn't hear you stomping around back there i was stomping around <laughs> i was focused on all that murk water <laughs> that stuff's tasty though you know chris is actually drinking on the show so it's actually not that uh bacteria full he is okay he just has 12 toes now. Yeah, he did grow a couple extra. Hey, I, I did collect the, the, the uh, cooled off trim off the pitcher that I made, and the color is the true color. It's not annealed, but I wanted you guys to get a close-up of what that color looks like. Check it out. That's that trim of the lip that made the perfect pour spout, but we've got the white on the inside, very light opalescent, and then we've got that beautiful multicolored uh, cranberry, which is great. And that does look like some type of like crazy Australian boomerang. Testing, testing. I think I might pass my mic off to you, Mom. I'll take the camera for a second and I'll pass it off. I'm going to go over the table real quick, but Chris knows the deal coming up next. He's got his first sweat of the year. No, I sweated a couple weeks ago. <laughs> ah, I remember. Uh -huh. <laughs> yep, those pores are stretched out. Uh, the sun comes in so beautifully here, folks. We hope you come visit us. I know I heard last show Mary Thompson's coming through. Uh, we got a lot of beautiful products in the gallery. We may have a little glowing giveaway here tonight. But it's just looking amazing over here, folks. Really excited for you guys to come visit us. And if not, join us for the show weekly. Check this out brand new color order you guys put in the chat I don't know I don't need to make it all about money I just can't not think about how much that amount of color costs we're very pointed about when we order the time of year when we have the ability to inventory and make sure everything's lined up and have the finances to back up our purchase but it's a serious uh, serious process keeping these trays full keeping the color stock that we want and we use on a regular they're not always in stock either. So it's kind of a difficult puzzle piece that uh, luckily I've got Oliver on my team now. He's got a great brain, he's a great organizer, and he's been doing a really great job with inventory helping me out in this process. So uh, super cool, appreciate him very much. A couple other notes is that we've got here listed are multiple different organizations that we're gonna give back to next week these were suggested by you guys we added a couple in there we're going to spin the wheel tonight and let you guys know which one's going to be on our charity show next week so that you guys can prepare and you guys can tell your friends and family if it means something to you and we will have a huge donation portion of next week's show going to that specific charity the other thing we're going to do coming up final show of the month 
is that we are going to be doing a similar process to what we did last week. We're going to collaborate with some of our members on some artistic, beautiful pieces. And we'll give you a little more detail on that in a minute here. Now that these guys have it all chopped up, I'm going to keep moving the camera around. Bess? Hello. Hey. <laughs> What's the plan? We got it, you guys. And I'm doing something that's kind of themed around spring again, but it's a, a candlestick, an individual centerpiece candlestick that's a succulent. I got it. Word. My mic's on, but it's an Good individual uh, candlestick that is going to be really beautiful with the perps chartreuse green which i love alternated kind of spiraling through the whole piece multiple level and it's really something that you're going to put a candle in the middle of your table and just enjoy uh and have it be kind of an organic maybe bohemian style delight mm. kind of sounds like my childhood bedroom it was purple chartreuse and hot pink nice <laughs> i like That's it powerful that's powerful. All right, so we're going to get together. And the cool thing about this is it's a lot of multiple bits, you guys, a lot of multiple bits. We're going to see a lot of action coming from Oliver here. And you can see he's getting prepped. He's shucking the pipes. You heard him over there. He was, like, making all that noise. And that's just him knocking off, like we talked about earlier, all that excess glass. So now you can see we've got our clear bucket, recycle bucket, Water bucket. He's got all fresh pipes getting preheated, ready to go. And Chris is going to get this yeah, process drop the foot, drop the foot going. And then we need Iris out. We had a lot of people comment on the idea of Merc water drinks, which they really liked. So they're liking that theme. Uh, a couple people said they would actually buy a sealed bottle of Merc water, which is an interesting concept. asking if we can do that, if we can bottle with our licenses, but the real question for me is, you want it like, uh, are we allowed to ship like that big live with all iris? biodynamic nope, not yet. Merc water in USPS mail? I want to say no. Sounds like a hazard. Really? What if it's not, what if it's not actually biodynamic? I was thinking if we have like rusted crow or someone Well, I, I heard Beth say that people were saying that they would buy a sealed thing of actual Merc water. And I think what we have to think about as Glass Academy is if we put that out in the world, what happens if they unseal it? <laughs> Wait, they of, have to sign a toxic waiver. Yeah, like a bunch of unsealed Merc water out there it ac was across sealed. the world. Like a time capsule. As Chris takes his heat. Show us the Merc water. <laughs> Man, you can't even probably see. It's dark in there. Here. It's got some texture to it. Oh, yeah, that's... And that's not bad. Right now, it's on mass task. We've all got a weekly task or three to keep the bucket clean. So those get cleaned Blow once a week. Wait a second. Jake's been talking and he didn't have a mic. Did you guys hear? I like this. Sending my <laughs> voice down the tunnel. Looks like a doorknob or a trailer hitch. I prefer to think of it as like a uh, yes. monk, a monkey pacifier. Okay. Well, the question today was, what household item would you want to see made in glass? So we've got trailer hitch, monkey Go pacifier. We could have like it could be anything, dog uh, toy. Yeah. I mean, I always have a monkey pacifier hanging around. I do around have my it on the screen, the so it's in that lower third. If we want to make sure we're. Oh, yep. So. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the there you question. go. All right, donation day, charity show. We've got, we haven't come up with a complete name, but what we're doing is we're going to spin this wheel. Zoom! And it's going to land on something. Amy's done the research to which organization we've chose. Like if the theme was veteran, she chose a variety of veterans organizations and chose one. Yeah, to make sure they're legit, that they have a, a nonprofit number, that they're 
money is going into the people who it's for, not just for the board members and CEOs of the organization. Now, once we spin the wheel today at some point, in the end, we are going to have that charity be featured next week on the show. Anything that's sold during the show, whether it's from the show table or the gallery in general, the whole website, 20% of those proceeds will be given back to the organization that's on that's Spin the Wheel. So that's why we were asking for your feedback of which show or what organizations you would like to see us partner with. And so that is going to be happening today. And again, we don't know if it's called Donation Days. I can't remember. We had another name in the office. Charity Show. If you think of some cool name, you want to name it. Just Press. Tala. Thank you, Michelle, for grabbing that from of me. Of course. Press. So that's up. kind of a lot of information, but we'll put those Lighten in the up. e-news. Show, which is pretty fun. We'll Why is there a clock over Beautiful. there? That's kind of cool. Yeah, I need one of those at home. See that clock? Ta-da! It's 7 o'clock. And I heard many of you liked our new wall over there. We're going to add one more panel to it. Our little fence, our neighborhood fence. Kind of stops some of the background action because there's a lot going on when we film. Sometimes it's difficult to focus your eyes when the studio has a bunch of stuff in it. All right, I do believe this is a succulent candlestick holder. It is not a monkey pacifier nor a trailer hitch. Yeah, we long lost the pacifier. We made, we've made a, a baby rattle for people. We have made, that's why we asked what um, household item. I was thinking like a, a cake cutting spoon, like, a, like if you're cutting a big cake, spatula kind of knife. A couple people in the comments say, a spoon rest for in the kitchen, a oh, sugar bowl, a salt bowl. Ooh, I like. See, I'm glad we asked these questions. Spoon rest would be really cool. Would that be okay for heat, though, if you're cooking and putting a hot utensil on it? If it's solid, it has to take a lot to break okay. it. Um, if it were thin and you put, like, something hot, but we could test one and then we could all fun. take it home. It'd be kind of a cool class. Yeah, that would be fun. All right, we're going shark cheese. All right, the Let's next see. part of this is a bunch of bits attached to it. Chris, are you using both Jake and Oliver? Uh, I could, but there's a little bit of time in between every bit that has to be done, so go for it, Oliver. I'm am, ready. Am I going thumb size or bigger? Oh, uh, bigger, for sure. You're going probably like uh, that big on the first one. Okay. We did not sketch this picture out, so you guys are just going to have to work with us as we roll along. I have no visual aids for you. All right, so I'm making sure this is uh, smoothed out on the top and has a lot of nice, uh, I'm trying to lower it down because I don't want it to be too tall, you guys. I want this thing to be hovering over the table. Right behind you. All right, Oliver's got his goodness for me. I got mine going pretty good right here. So I'm making sure that the top is smooth. We're gonna have a nice connection. I'm pretty much imagining that this whole section right here is gonna be hidden by large succulent uh, tentacles. Yeah. You know what this reminded me of that was a really cool move that Drew Hine would do when I was working in Pittsburgh was he would take the scraps of the cutoff okay, of something and use this to scribe because this is sharp glass here. It was just, it was cut off, but when glass is cut, 
it's technically squished down to such a fine edge that it gets cold and breaks at that super thin edge. Feels like you're just cutting like leather though, but he would take the tip of this and scribe the bottom, turn the pipe and scribe the bottom in a perfect circle so he knew right where to stick the punny. Mm, that's cool. Yeah. But sometimes we like to get real, uh, real uh, yep. hardcore with it and do this, the old uh, squish and slide. Jam yep. it on there and slide it in place. Say it again. Drew Hine is Another an incredible one? glass blower. Bigger Him and his one. wife in uh, at Vessel Studio in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I worked with those guys for almost three years. Woo! That gimbal is getting wild. The wild gimbalizer. Look at that. Five cuts, just as we were talking about cutting glass. So he took that. And depending on how well, it was a lot to happen in one move. He took Twice the ball as big on as that there, one, Oliver. Just like a foot. He squished it open from the inside so it was a ring and then cut the ring five times. So now Beautiful. he's going to take each of those uh, singular cut marks that were separated and he's going to sculpt them into a beautiful succulental shape. Pinch and pull, it's a classic move. Look at how that just finished that off. Beautiful elegance in glass, and depending on how much the mics are picking up, you may hear each second and third time he's touched that now. You can hear the tink of the tool, it's becoming solid as he's touching it with the metal. Let me get in there. All right, Jake just gave me the mic. Coming While up. we were gone in New York, we went to okay. all these plant and nursery centers, and Chris was just inspired by all the plants we saw in the nurseries. Some of them had rare plants, so we were looking at the colors and the techniques of them. Yep. Bigger again? Nope. So see what that is? Spreads it out with the tweezers. You always want to cut glass when you've got as much heat as possible. It'll dull the shears. It's not a healthy look on the material either. So he gets all the way around and cuts it. Wow, it's super thick and still got plenty of heat. And they're really building this up as we go here. John says, what's up, everybody? Watching from a secret location today. Ooh. Whoa. Murkwater Dungeon. How am I going on size? <laughs> oh, you're going to get gather over that? Yeah. Yeah, go for it. Same size. Okay. Oh, yeah. Connecticut's the bomb diggity. Saw some great pictures, some great people. Nope. Look at that, stretching it out. Yeah, when you're stretching glass and elongating glass like this, the timing literally, I mean, it looks like he's doing it all very intentionally. It's because he is. And the timing of when he lets go of each one of those is so important. The thickness, the amount that he's pulled it, the timing of letting it go, because just the tiniest little bit of extra time or not enough heat will allow it to fall back, drip down on itself. Beautiful. I feel like it's been a minute since I've sweated on the live show. Yeah, we're getting back into sweaty season. It's a beautiful thing. I know, it's been a little while. Keeps us in shape. No marber. Just get her hot and bring her on. So Michelle's saying after this piece, we're going to spin the wheel to see the charity show okay. for next week. Stay down.
Another. Yep. Thinking and focusing today. That's oh. a good sign. So Got if you guys mesmerized. have any technical questions, throw them in the chat. We'd love to answer them. Right behind you. It's becoming a bigger and bigger piece. And the, the taller it gets and the more extremities there are, the more Chris has to focus about the things that he's not working on down near the foot, all those those first two layers of succulent action really focused on. I, I am working on getting the Yeah, that's a great point by Michelle. Not forget about them. That are in the race for getting into the playoffs. Bass. Got to go with my boys, my orange <laughs> and black flyers. <laughs> the Philadelphia Flyers, baby. So my mom actually texted me a, a question. She said, do the glass blowers have a lot of burn scars? Burn scars. And the first thing I think of is Matt. <laughs> yeah. Matt's a champion. You know, Matt is a champion. And um, he's an incredible, talented Passion. However, I'd say 80% of the time he doesn't even wear his glasses and he needs glasses to see. Who's this? Matt. Oh, no glasses, Matt? Yeah, no glasses, Matt. So <laughs> if you look real close and not burn, our um, four, you know, we we're going to put some old Very mind together. So this no is the Oh, I see. So you're done with the succulentation. Now, when you open that up for candles, Chris, are you doing that in the Suzuki method? Yes, I've got the Suzuki method really happening here. I see it in his wrist. Oh, look at that. Using the shears as tweezers to not lose the time of setting it down and to also not have tweezer marks, to have shear marks in the same spots that he's already pinched. That's the Suzuki method right there. Beautiful. See a round of thumbs, you guys, and just so you know, sharing the feed, spreading it around, well, telling your friends and family no makes a huge yeah. difference. You learn it every day that the more you tell people, we can do all the marketing we want to do in the world, but the more you actually say, there's a couple amazing customers, you guys know who you are out there, I know you're talking about us all the time. The amount of people that have seen what we do and joined us on the Glass Academy Addicts page or joined our family here locally and abroad and throughout the United States. Those top customers and those people that really love what we do and are finding appreciation of it, learning and growing with us, I'd say, gotta say 75% of them came from word of mouth. But super cool guys and we appreciate that. Whether you're purchasing or not, just spreading the love, watching what we do, super cool back up and running. I know a couple of you were watching on there and bounced over just in case you wanted to put that back up on your TV screen like I know some of you do. It is running again. Welcome back to the YT. Uh, we're getting to the once. final stages here. Can we stick a GA stamp on it? We're going to hear what Chris it. is planning out in a second. Okay. I'll, I'll get you one. <laughs> I'll let you figure that out. <laughs> What's going through your head here? I was trying to think if I could get a GA stamp down in there. Down in where? Right in there. Pitcher and the glasses are gone. Pitcher and glasses are sold, thanks to the update, Bess. All right, all right. It's always, there's such a good feeling. As soon as you hear that, I'm so curious who got them. It's so fun, especially doing this virtually. I love seeing familiar faces in our gallery. Whether I actually know your guys' names or not, 
I love seeing people's familiar faces and it's going by and being like, what up? But being on... When people come into the gallery and I, I go to the register and cash them out and they're like, oh my gosh, I see you on the show. That's so cool. <laughs> but seeing people's names are just equally as satisfying, you know, whether it's a Donald or a Daryl could be anybody I could have never met you before but when I see Daryl two weeks in a row I'm like let's get it Oops. Kathleen I use my candle holder to hold my crystal orbs That's if you amazing. ever hear somebody sign on Bill Carley make sure you tell me so I can say hi Bill because Bill said a few times he said some comments I talked to him on the telephone today and he's like I watch your show sometimes I even comment but you never comment back. And I was like, it's because <laughs> I wasn't. Like, how could you see? Well, no, but I just said, I said maybe someone else who's looking at the names doesn't know who Bill Carly is. So I'm telling you guys, so if it pops up, be like, hey, do him a shout out. Shout out to Bill. Next time I see Bill, I'll make a mental note. Yeah, that's all I was saying. It's not, not anything yes, uh, more than just putting the awareness out there because he's a sweet dude. Everybody knows right. how to enter the giveaway. You send that answer to enews at glassacademy.com. Um, what household items and handmade items would you like to see us make just like this? The ridiculous handmade, one of a kind, Production. for sale, about to be blingified, candle or crystal ball orb holder. All right, so in between this piece, Bess and I are going to go handle some business. We're going to get some housekeeping done. We're going to do last week's giveaway. Maybe We're going to give it. away last week's piece. And whilst that happens, W-H-I-L-S-T, whilst. <laughs> you talking about whistle? I'm talking about, yeah. Exactly. Oh, Whilst quite that some happens. Oven mitts there, Oliver. We're gonna. Pour Oliver's I was getting, I was getting a little bit chilly on Oliver, my in my come fingers. On over, Oliver. Oliver, let's do it. All right, let me get a little bit of preheat on these guys. Beautiful. You notice how Oliver's moving it around a little bit. He's not trying to hold on to one particular succulent stem too hard and too long. Okay, take it away, baby. He's got it. He's flipping it. He's walking it. Michelle's already prepped over there at her favorite annealing oven. <laughs> Linda one. says this candle holder is so lovely, something that I would love to see and use on the middle Ooh. of the dining room table. Oh Ooh. my God, yeah, with your kitchen, uh, Thank you. your kitchen uh, light nice blasting down on it. Ah. Nice work, team. That's yeah. really cool. That was a tasty one. Nice work, Oliver. So you guys are chopping up the giveaway. We're going over housekeeping and giving away some free glass, and then we're going to spin the wheel and pick our Love charity. Love it. Love it. Absolutely. I'm going to show the mushroom best, and then we'll uh, maybe handle some business. Whoa. Look, you can Is that dance. thing glowing? Yeah. Got some cute little fairy lights Are we going to send there. those fairy lights with it? Yes. So someone's winning this for free right now? Yes. Handmade perps mushroom with fairy lights Absolutely. and GA stamp. I love it with the cute little fairy lights in it. Just like the one that's for sale on the table, too. <laughs> what is that, number eight? It that's what I'm talking eight. about. With this little Slimer. He's a cutie. Aww. All right, Bess, lay it down on us. All right, so question last week was, have you ever thought about changing your first name or wanted to change your first name? And if you have, what would you want to change it to? Interesting. Um, yeah, fun question. So we have a lot of people who said, um, yes, they would love to change their name. Um, one that was really cute that I liked was, I would not change my name, I like it, but I am getting a new name soon, Nona, which is Italian for grandmother. So that's cute. Nona? So they're, yep, they're getting a name change in a way. I know who that is. And if I don't, maybe it's some other amazing grandma, but I know a great customer of ours who has that in her email. Okay. All right. Um, some people said, no, my parents gave it to me. Uh, I would never change my name when I was bored. My grandmother gave me my name. 
So some people have a family connection to their name, which is cool. Incredible. Um, and then we've got some fun ones. People have been saying, well, I, you know, this is my full name, but I would really like to change my nickname. And then some people are totally switching it up. What's your nickname? My Bass. nickname is Bess. <laughs> Do you have a shorter one than that? I, I think that might be the shortest. Um, a lot of people call me Bees sometimes, though. Bees? I have some friends who call me Bees because when I got one of my bowling balls, it was supposed to be engraved with Bess, and it auto-corrected, and it was Bees. That's amazing. So I get Bess, I get Bees. I'm not really a Beth person, never have been, but my full name is Bethany. That's what I was going to ask. So, That's I mean, good information. You don't really have too many. you got Jacob into Jake, right? Yeah, I've heard uh, Jacoby. That's a fun one. Jake the Snake. Jake the Snake. And that's about it. That's about it. All right. Well, our winner for this beautiful mushroom. Or Shroom Donna, winner. Donna's named it the Magnificent Purple Mushroom. Yes. I had to put that name out there. So the winner says, never wanted to change my first name, but I've hidden my middle name all my life. I'm not going to read it out loud because they're hiding it. <laughs> um, I hated it. Any other name would be better than that one. And then she gave an alternate that she also would hate that she did not want either. So. <laughs> Keep it secret. I'm keeping secrets. <laughs> but, drum roll. Champion with the purple magnificent mushroom. Congratulations, oh! Linda. Linda. All Champion right. GA addict. So you guys know the drill. Linda, if you are local, you can come by and swing. Uh, come swing by and pick that up totally for free. Or watch out for that email from Donna, and she will explain to you how to pay for shipping if you are not local. It's already gone, Linda. It's already where it needs to belong. What else do we got? We got a wheel spin coming up. Let's I'll take let a look. I'll let you do the honors. Oh, me? Absolutely. All right. Now, some of these are, they seem to be acronymed. Yes. So, right? Acro it's, it's good. It's an acronym. Um... And I know that, like we said, these are charity spots for next week's show. We're spinning this so that we can get information to tell you guys to look it up and have it prepped for next week's show. So, Amy, when I hit this special, will you help me understand which one it actually is and tell people where to go to understand it? I mean, yeah, like Fisher House, Fisher House, this is the Got it. All yeah, right. Yeah, so, she, so there's a couple duplicates CRI, on here. She CRI does have answers. some explanations, but... We'll get more info this week and next week as well. So here we go. Going to be a give back portion. We're going to do this once a month. If you guys have suggestions of places you want us to donate to, send it in the chat. And we got NAMI, or could be name. Worry. Show next. And let's take a look at site. Take a look at yourself today. What's so the two Lynn. things I want to mention real quick. You're such Linda a in the chat says thank you, Jake, Chris, and Michelle. I'll cherish it. Glad to hear it's going to a wonderful, loving home, Linda. You're the bomb, Linda. Also, shout out to Amy. You guys can see Amy in the chat about a minute ago. Did put the link to Nami or Nami or whoever they are and however we say it. Shout um, out, Amy. So you guys can can Name see me? more about that. Amy the Nami. <laughs> Is that her new nickname? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Amy. Um, <laughs> anyway, what I was going to say a second ago, folks, is people watch reality TV for their many different reasons, and this is reality TV. This is live two hours a week with a family of glass blowers in a small business. You've even got this guy. <laughs> yeah, his mic's turned off. Jake, if we ever get to, like, pre-recorded two-hour episodes things and not doing the live deal, yeah, we need, like, the reality TV show cutaway of just whatever's going on, it cuts to one of us, and we just say something really mean about that person. Yeah, like, <laughs> totally. Like office. Yeah, just, I can't believe Jake brought that foot like that. Well, that's what I'm saying. You guys can cue, if you guys have been watching the show for long enough, whoa. What is happening? There it is, the board. I to see the board. Oh, nice move. I'll get the board in a second. I just thought Chris was whipping up something nice. Um, 
if you guys have been watching the show long enough and you know our personalities and you know the way it goes, you do be seeing mood swings on the show and you do be seeing sass. No. Oh, yeah. I've seen some Jake mood swings in my time. I've had my fair share of mood swings and you may or may not notice it, but I've got moody on the show. I don't know if Chris has ever been moody on the show. But uh, Oliver, he gets pretty moody. Good. <laughs> that, that's what they always say about me. <laughs> Big moody guy. <laughs> that's hilariously sarcastic. But <laughs> Oliver, blow lightly. It's really reality TV, folks. It's the truth. Good. Got a couple people joining in late, but that's all right. You're here. Hello, Pammy and Bill. What all up, right, you guys? You got it. Succulent goodness here. How many guys remember the bus? This beautiful drawing right here is what you may have missed if you weren't here at the beginning of the show. And at first glance, it might look like a blue sock floating down a wooden river or a nice dirty river. But at second glance... Are those ants in it? Are ants in it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Rocks, oh. air plants, and a log, folks. That's right. <laughs> I thought they were ants. Chris blew a giant bubble onto yeah, a yeah. true wooden log. I love that log. <laughs> that log's nice. It looks like the foot kicking a log. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll take half she of that. She said, good thing I didn't go in a drawing, but the ironic thing is that last bit, week Oliver. we did okay. use your drawings, and they turned out so okay. amazing and incredible. So a reminder, too, that we're going to be reaching out to Loyalty League members on the 30th. We're going to do a show inspired, just, just like we did last week, by Michelle's drawings, You got it. with inspiration from our Loyalty League members. Yep. If you guys are interested in becoming a Loyalty League member, you'll have to reach out to us and ask how that works because um, there is open enrollment. There is certain enrollment time periods, and I don't quite understand, but we will get it figured out. And you should just send us an email if you're interested in figuring that out. There's a wait list. But look at this. He's back in Suzuki Land. This could be, it's a really cool foot. It's like campfire log foot. Campfire log foot. This is a, We've all a, had that before. A motive candle. Motif? It's got a really good motive. Votive, votive. A votive <laughs> candle that's sitting in a succulent. Succulent sitter. Hot. I'll be ready in a minute. <laughs> zero zero. End of the first. Nice. Whoa. Oliver, I'm ready. Nice hot bit, Oliver. The ratio of symmetry to heat is what glass blowing is all about. You can simplify that ratio by calling it the finesse of the way Another that you one, work Oliver. the glass. But that is what it boils down to. It's heat control and it's shape. And it's really just the ability to work your fingers in the Suzuki style. So again, what I've heard through the rumor vine is that our pitcher has sold, the rocks or the, the twist cups have sold. Nice. What else did we make on the show? Oh, the one, uh, the log piece for and members only. And the succulent. We're going to have to get that succulent available onto uh, the internet as soon as 
we can. Thanks for that hockey update, Kerry. On a quick glance at my phone, I could see we're doubling the Capitals in shots. So let's put a little more mojo out there for the boys. Michelle says it was amazing to see you in uh, Connecticut, Carrie. Super cool. You ready, Ollie? Yeah. Needed money. It All sounds right. like motive sounds more legit. That's right. Someone's calling for an answer to this. this. Someone in the chat answer. It's yeah. Oliver B. Michelle. Let the people speak, folks. Okay, Ali, I'm ready. Someone who's watched all of NCIS, let us know. <laughs> yeah. Is it motive or is it method of yep. operation? I mean, method of operation could be tweezers. It could be the Suzuki method. Left, left. It does. It's got some pineapple mojo. Totally. A pineapple M.O. <laughs> Something like that. Things looking okay, and I see people are oh commenting again, goodness. so hopefully we weren't frozen for too long. You know what I'm seeing right here? What I'm seeing is that we've got our first photo shoot of three cocktails and three glasses being designed this Saturday, and I was gonna make the three glasses tomorrow, and I've got two of the drinks picked out, and I knew exactly what I was gonna make for the glasses, and the third one, I didn't really have anything that was really sticking to me. And looking at that, with a flared, strong foot that won't crack on the bottom, that just might be drink glass number three, folks. Do you already have the drink picked out and you were yes. looking for the style? Okay. Yes. So me and my buddy who's a mixologist has given his opinion on the three drinks. We've agreed on the three drinks. I got two glasses designed. They may change a little bit tomorrow when we try and make them actually in person, but depending on how the photo shoot goes and the actual drinks and the glasses work uh, during this photo shoot, they could become some of the first few signature drinks of the bar once it's open. but. We're gonna see how that turns out. We're gonna have to, this is all a learning process here, and we're gonna see, but that is pretty tasty. We're gonna have tons of mocktail yep. options. We're gonna do collaborations with local and non-local mixologists on the show. We're queuing that up in our brain, writing down notes on it. We'll send out, uh, if you guys know of anyone, have them reach out. Anyone who might be interested in the mixology world or the drinkware world, for that matter. But it could be uh, there could be a donation portion. They don't have to be local, but we will be featuring uh, one of the first ones on the show is going to be a guy Kevin from Sfumato, and he's got a book coming out on mixology. We'll have him on the show. We'll highlight some of his drinks, collaborate with him. He's got a PhD in mixology. And uh, it's going to be really cool. It's going to be really cool. So just stay tuned for that. Everything's going to transform. It's not going to be every single show, but it's a new addition to what we're doing. And uh, we can't just do the same thing every single day. We got to keep growing. We got to keep progressing. We got to have goals we're shooting for just for our own personal satisfaction. Everyone has them in the business here. And that's part of what's coming up for the next uh, few years for us. And we're excited to have you guys watch with us. I like that question very much. You know, I could just hear what everyone's favorite drink is in the chat right now, whether it's a mocktail, whether it's orange juice, whether it's some kind of fancy cocktail. I'd love to get a poll, and if one of those three drinks I hear of is one of the three drinks that we're gonna be making this Saturday, I will give an insight as to what that drink is. One of my go-tos used to be just a classic mojito, but now I'm kind of more into like the spicy tequila drinks. Spicy what? Spicy tequila drinks. Oh yeah. That might be in the realm of what's going on. That Look or I like a smoked tequila drink too. 
Those are good. That's a pretty little sweet looking little uh, candle holder for that the That is a really cool item. That is a really cool item. Now, Jake, it's not one of my favorite drinks, but I know it's one of the three on your drink list. Yes. Whole milk. Whole milk? Only if we got an espresso maker and a frother. <laughs> John, you know, if you'd bring that question back up, I would love to go into detail about that on next week's show. I know you'll be here. I appreciate, as always, your technical questions, but as we are uh, reaching the final portion of this piece, I don't want to distract from the final moments, and uh, please help us remember to bring that up next week. Did we? Got a couple drinks coming in. Okay. Shouts out NCAA. Yep, or shouts out UConn. The NCAA championship last night. Incredible, incredible game. Incredible season. And if you guys watch college basketball, throw a thumb into the chat. Huh? Yeah, just throw it in there. Carol says coconut, rum, and pineapple juice. Bill says Mike's blood orange on ice, so refreshing. Dana yep. just says straight up milk. Uh, Patty <laughs> says whiskey sour. Sharon says spicy margarita and Long Island iced tea. Joshua says, hold on, they're coming in quick. It's moving my chat. <laughs> Joshua says smoked old fashioned. Ooh, Jody says love mojitos and Caesars. Kathleen says that's really nice, Chris. Uh, Marty says peach schnapps and Sprite. That sounds interesting. Mm. Uh, Mary says cream soda uh, with fireball. I'm not a big cream soda person. I never have been, but I do love a good root beer, but that probably wouldn't be good with fireball in it. Interesting. Bess, do you know what this drink is? The modus operandi? Is that a uh, signature drink that's going to be coming to the bar? <laughs> it just might be. <laughs> no, that's what the people said M.O. means, and that is amazing. That is a beautiful, ridiculous piece. John says, rock and rye, and my mom put a thumb in the chat for you. Let's go. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> well, did All we right. find out what M.O. means? Yes, what? modus operandi. Modus. Everyone said that, and nobody that's, gave us a description. MO. But if I know my uh, my Latin, Greek, and uh, ancient, I'm pretty sure Egyptian. that translates in the motive. Yeah, I think it, no, I think it means motive. It kind of more sounds like motive operation. Don't you do? Uh, come on, man! Don't do it. I'm on, on live, your side. On live. <laughs> <laughs> don't do this to me, man. <laughs> That's a good, good it question. It is 747. While the boys are chatting to figure out what they're going to do, Michelle is showing the table one more time. <laughs> Got a couple All of right, nice things still it. left up there. <laughs> Amy did a great job of curating a couple of pairings. I know. The little slugs went off to their new home and left their pile of rocks I can twist it behind. up. I'm, I'm down for it. All right. So then you must have heard Oliver make a bunch of noise just now into his microphone. Look, at now he's chugging water over here. I think he's getting a little extra sweaty. Ugh. Whoa. And if you buy number two with the batch tote, you get the 5% discount. And anytime you bring in that batch tote and use it, you get 5% off as well. Or on a fifth Saturday, you get 25%, 25%. off. Hey, Jay. Folks, that was not the giveaway. We're doing it now. I was thinking about maybe using one of the colors on the table. Any recommendations on that? Old Sienna. We can get him some Old Sienna. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not the Go yellow. No, with the lemon yellow or the copper blue. Okay, so that's the giveaway? All right, that's the giveaway, Oliver. But do another one, we always need an extra. All right. So, there we go. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> Instead of one? 
All right, you're getting two giveaways per <laughs> Michelle's suggestion, folks. You're getting Chris's masterpiece, the last piece that was just made, and Oliver's first ever twist cup on the show. Exactly. So two pieces are getting given away this week. You better answer. Before our charity show next week, we're feeling even more generous, folks. We're just putting and some uh, good, good vibes out for the hockey that's going on. Yes. Right now. How about that? A little bit of Red Wing Mojo. Double giveaway night. Let's see it. Let's let the boys get some action. Now, I've walked through a twist cup with Oliver this past week. The first ever twist cup he's done, and he did say it was the best cup he's ever done in general. It did turn out really nice, um, and we're going to see how this one turns out on the show. I'm going to be there to assist him. I may give him some pointers, but you guys are going to see Oliver's brain really working here. John says, can the giveaway be a blue foot kicking a log? It's <laughs> a good one, John. It's a really good one. I do have that giveaway question up on the screen for you guys just one more time. What household item would you want to see handmade out of glass? A blue foot, nice and sculpted. You guys are going to send your answer to enews at glassacademy.com. I have loved seeing your guys' answers in the chat throughout the night, but the chat does not get you guys entered to win. So make sure you're sending your answers to enews at glassacademy.com. And if you guys really want to be nice to Donna, who helps pick people, she puts all your names on be a wheel. Be nice to it, Donna. Please put your name and your email as well so we know who you are. It, listen. If you ever call the Glass Academy, be nice. <laughs> I, I, even more, if you ever call anyone, be nice. <laughs> That's the truth. I'm going to put you in charge of the phone this weekend. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. I need you to start over, but this time, be nice. Perfect. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I, th I think I've mentioned it before on the show, but... If you guys heard, if you guys picked up the phone and left us a voicemail and all you heard was me say, my name is Jeff, <laughs> then <laughs> that's because we've gone through many different issues with the phones, folks. We basically, we chopped the Comcast bill in half, but in doing that, they wanted to send us a brand new set of phones, and we tried to work it into a million different cool, new, hip, and trendy ways to work a phone. <laughs> We even thought about having a robot answer the phone with AI. But I need to focus on what Oliver's doing here. We got it figured out now and it's nice and regular. Get that thing hot and let it get off the pipe. Mary Lou says, can we get a close up of number 12 on the table? So I'm not looking to dog. I'm never looking to dog on Oliver, but it's a really cool example when Chris and I make most of the pieces and then Oliver hops in to make something or Matt does to kind of notice the difference and not to point it out and show you guys that he's still learning and growing, but just to show you the different way that things go down and what the cause and effect of the things we talk about all the time, but you may not see happen, happen, happen. happen, happen. Look at the way that the pipe is halfway down into the piece. I actually even mentioned it earlier on today's show. I would marvel it one time, don't even worry about the dunk. Get it hot and then do the twist and blow. Beautiful. Um, super instrumental technique to understand this and have your, your understanding of glass figured out. But I mentioned when Chris went into the optic mold, there's a huge importance to how much you push down or pull up and when you're blowing into the glass and how hot you have it and the shape of the bubble in there. There's a million things. And I've been on solid stems all day today. And he's been on solid stems, so he's been really padding into the mold harder than it, he might need to with a cup like this. Blow. Keep it coming. Is that good? Yes, nice. Give me a little bit more, please. Good. Beautiful. He did a great job there, pushing down on the back edge and getting the bubble all the way up towards the neckline. So even though he's got a lot of it on the moil, he really utilized as much of that glass as he could by blowing it out near the tip of the pipe. Now, I'm going to be OK. Yeah. 
And Michelle doesn't have a mic, but what she's mentioning is that she could do a twist cup next week, and she said it'd be really bad. And she's done a lot of twist cups in her day, but it's more than just knowing the technique. It's about being really comfortable with the glass, being really in, in hand and tune with it in the moment. If she's not blowing glass eight days out of the week like we all are, um, then she would probably be human because you can only blow glass seven days out of the week max. Yeah, exactly. I, I think part of what you're getting at here, Jake, and this might be a revelation to some people, is that some things are like riding a bike where you learn it once and you never forget. And I don't find that glass blowing is like that. I, from what I have seen, it's something that you have to use it every single day. Or do it, do it long enough every single day that when you get away from it for two or three weeks, so, for one reason for or another, man. you can still do it the same because you've got that much built-in muscle memory and knowledge. And it's just like a musical instrument. You know, it's like playing a musical instrument is, you know, you. I played the trumpet for 15 years and then I stopped when I got out of college and I haven't blown on my trumpet or my French horn or anything in 15 years. And it's like, if I picked it up now, I could make a noise, but I couldn't play a concerto. It's just not gonna happen. And it's the same as... Uh, Squish? Yeah. Squishy time. Oliver go to Renfest last year. Yes, he did. Yes. Oliver? Yeah. Oliver came out, I think, for one weekend last year. That was his, just lower, as his please. beginning of working here at the studio and getting to know the material. Um, and we were just talking about it this past week, being out at the Ren Fair and doing these shows. It's um, it's a pretty crazy step that we do that's on top of actually blowing glass that is talking to you guys and explaining it and making a show out of it at the Renaissance Festival. So for our team and who goes out there each year, it's dependent on many factors other than your glass blowing capabilities. Yeah, I think I agree with you on that, Jake. It's something that I'm still learning how to do. Like talking in general isn't something that I find too hard. It's talking while doing something. That's the hard part. Yeah. Yeah, very much. Well, it's just like, I mean, you could kind of think about it. In my mind, the way I think about it is like when you're talking about glass as you're making it, it's kind of like your left hand turning on the pipe as you're putting on a punty. Yeah. It's happening in the background. It needs to be part of uh, what's going on. And looks like we're going for an extra set of tweezers. I have an idea. Great where Beautiful. Chris left him. <laughs> I, I did caught not, Oliver doing that. I didn't know that was a you move, Chris. This past week, I did that during a production day, and Jake was like, did you just pull a Chris? <laughs> I said, only one person can handle that move. <laughs> so true. <laughs> I, I, you know when it was? Last week when Jake was running me through making a twist cup. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep, it's 100% true. It's looking pretty good, Oliver. It's looking Had really a nice, good. Nice, elegant twist on it. So this is a small glass. This is like trying to make a shot glass out of the big hole. The size of that opening is pretty large in comparison to the front and actually the length of this glass. So as he goes to pluck and trim this ice oh, cold lip, way more heat. Way he's more going heat. to go back in for some more heat. But the trick with having just such a large opening like that is that a lot of that heat, what are you putting your arm up on some <laughs> shelf over there? <laughs> Just hanging out. <laughs> uh, yeah, the heat's traveling down towards the punty for Oliver, so it's not going to be the easiest move. If he had twice as tall of a glass, if he had utilized all the glass he had pulled out of the furnace, it might be a little bit different of a story. But that's just kind of the compiling difficulties of learning glass blowing. One thing leads to the next, and all of a sudden you're like, whoa. But there's a whoa. Good color pattern to show the heat. He's got a great line on it. Takes a little more patience with something smaller like that. You gotta let the heat creep into it. He's doing the turn towards himself and pull. Now he's gonna heat it one more time. And now I have a I have not. I actually and in, in a lot of ways in the way I've trained Oliver is I've been like, it's time to do it. 
and he starts doing it. <laughs> the first time I think Oliver was trimming in the shop was I had Matt doing shot glasses over there, and I asked Oliver to open them up after Matt had made the shot glass, and he had to trim them, and he figured it out on the fly. We lost one or two, but maybe that's the cost of... Yep. Michelle's got some good training tips, but he got a nice trim on there. Now he's going to heat it up. I'm going to paddle the lip, and we're going to get it opened into a beautiful straight wall glass. This is giveaway number two, folks. We're still not into OT yet. Oliver's doing a great job with great time. Woo! It's getting close. Jake, I'm going to I'm gonna like preemptively say thank you for talking and narrating me making this piece because I'm wholly incapable of talking while making this. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like, bing! Springy poo. Turn, baby, turn. Looks like he's going for a picture. <laughs> oh, that's a opening. It's an opening. Heat up the ponty. So we're going to yank it open one more time. Another trick and just the beautiful thing why people love making twist cups is that the more heats you take, the less the optics stay there, the softer they get. And we pride ourselves on it. I've talked to Matt about it a lot with pumpkins, with anything with texture on it, those pineapple mold pieces Chris was just making. Uh, a talented glass blower has really tight optics, sharp ridges, powerful, powerful lines. And it's the sign of a good glass blower. So that's what we're working towards. We got a really nice shape going on here. It's looking good, Oliver. You know what they say, third, tr third tries the charm. I've heard him say it. <laughs> so if you guys have technical questions for Oliver or about what this process is all about, I already asked John to hold his question for next week. We know a lot of you guys watch weekly. If you don't watch weekly, join us for another show. It'd be super cool. but. Um, if you got questions, I'm not looking at the comments about Oliver, about what he's doing and what might be going through his head. If he is on the show next week, I got a feeling it might be Matt. Um, but save those questions for him, and he'll be happy to talk about them, I'm sure. Absolutely. Yeah, if you watch the YouTube chat, I do check out the comments on there just from my personal YouTube account. So if you ask me a question directly, nice. you might see something from Oliver or something like that. Some guy, Oliver. Let's take a look at it. <sighs> That's a cup. That it's will hold liquid. Woo! Give him a round of thumbs, folks. Just round of Go thumbs. Oliver. Real quick, want to show off the wall thickness on there by the lip. That was what I was really focused on. That's been a big growing point for me. These Very tweezers nice. up here for me to put some water Those on. Those tweezers are ready to go. I got the claw. That is the chartreuse green. He's going to torch the bottom, stamp it. I'm going to walk around in a circle for one minute. Yeah, just, just take a quick lap. Took one. And we're going to get this into the box, the final piece of the day. Look at that crisp stamp. <sighs> Acting like it was a little hot <laughs> over there, Oliver. My brain's on fire. <laughs> I was thinking. We kind of did throw Oliver under the bus with his mane being down. Oh, man. Final Blowing piece, glass. mane That's down, hot. getting Listen. sweaty. Sometimes you got to get sweaty. It happens. That's right. It's getting into the nice sweaty work, season. Nice my friend. Nice work. Well, thank beautiful you. Piece. Thank beautiful you. Piece. Thank you. Very nice. Woo. Love it. Well, I think that's a wrap, folks. We've got uh, a Wings game to get to. Red Wings yeah. are kicking butt. 0-0. Zero, zero. About <laughs> five or ten minutes in the second period. Uh, we went into our own personal overtime tonight, which was pretty darn nice. Shouts like out. It. And, uh, Four some, minutes. Some nice items in the box. We're looking forward to getting them out. I'm sure you guys are too to see them. Uh, and that's about it. So Shouts out to our members. Check out the table. Check out the Glass Academy website. Chris's succulents are going to be up on there. The one he made that's for sale will be up on here a little bit later as we clean up the show here. So refresh your page and take a look at that. But shouts out to our members. I'll stop screaming into the microphone. And we have a new updated graphic with our newest members' names, so you guys can watch for your name there. That's what we're talking about. Shouts out, everybody. All right. Good night. Night. <laughs>